Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. There was a magnitude 3.4 earthquake near New Indria, California. This is by Kalinga. Kalinga, many of you may know, back in 1983 had a magnitude 6.2 earthquake. It was on May 2nd of 1983 that caused significant damage back then. And this area of the earthquake is very significant because this is caused by plate tectonic movements. The uplift, the pressure that has built with the mountains as the, the plates move towards the southwesterly direction. Five people reported feeling this earthquake. Here we can see Clovis, um, San Luis Reservoir, all the way over here by Salinas and Watsonville. And that's all they're showing. This earthquake occurred at 1.59 a.m. local time. You can see the initial first wave of the earthquake. Yeah, what direction did it come from? From the movement of the tectonic plates, the North American plate moving southwest. You can see it up here in the northeast part. Uh, tension was applied going straight up. And as it happened before in 1983, the fault line rose up. See that? In a northwesterly direction. During the 1983 earthquake, which basically devastated downtown Kalinga, areas turned to quicksand, uh, rock slides everywhere. There was major damage to every oil and gas platform within the surrounding area. Blowholes, etc. There wasn't any fracturing to the ground. No crack showed up after the 1983 earthquake, but they did show up later um, because of the thousands of aftershocks. This is only about 35 miles from the San Andreas fault line. Yeah, this whole area is building up pressure. The 1983 earthquake was about 10 kilometers in depth. This one, too, is about 10 kilometers in depth. They didn't even know this fault existed, that something like this could happen until after it did. This is about 6.2 miles in depth. Yeah, there was no indication on the surface. In this published paper by USGS, it talks about how the Kalinga main shock occurred at the main structure boundary in Central California, where folds and thrusts of the uplifted coastal ranges about the depressed, gently west-dipping basement and overlying sediment rocks of the Sierra blocks. This is why you got the mountains as the uh, plates move yeah it locks it pushes up the structures of the mountains creates some mountains and then further out you got the valleys the paper of their research about the 1983 earthquake it says they indicate the presence of previously unknown thrust faults that extended northeastward from beneath Pleasant Valley they also have an image of how they suspect the uplift occurred. Yeah, we got the different um, slip faults. We got the backward thrusts, etc. I want to add too. This is just like what's going on in Washington and Oregon, um, that area with the Juan de Fuca fault line. You got all this buildup of pressure as these this land is being pushed up. Eventually. Enough stress is going to happen off the coast where this is all going to collapse and then move westward. How much of a drop would happen? Well, I couldn't tell you. You know, the entire mountain range wouldn't drop. But during the uh, 83 earthquake, yeah, they did have areas that did drop significantly. They also have here showing the different fault zones. The San Andreas fault zone, how its movement is going the Hayward Fault, um, the Plate Motion, the Great Valley. Um, we'll come down here and it shows uh, what's going on with these earthquakes. It doesn't show the North American Plate though, how it's moving in a west um, southern direction. You got to take that into consideration also. They have images of rock falls. Um, this cliff here is approximately 60 meters high which is about 197 feet. The rocks that fell, some of them as large as about 10 feet across. 
more images of rockfall. This one here, it says it partially blocked the road. Slumps where the mountains move down. Yeah, this is another factor they worry about there in Hawaii. Um, this one was along Las Gatas Creek. Yeah, very easily this whole side of the mountain could have just sheared off and yeah, came sliding down. This here is another area of a slump. It goes from all the way up here to down here, what they call the toe. Slump um, that occurred at the oil fields. You got sand blowholes. I can't really tell them here, but that's what that image is. Another one showing the slump in the creek. Sand blowholes, or as they call it, sand boils. Los Gatos Creek. And damages to the buildings there in Kalinga. This was all either unreinforced brick or stucco. Um, this image here, the support beam for the house under the windows evidently collapsed. Homes that were not secured to slabs, newer homes, or homes that were had been built on what they call mud walls, actually slid off their, their foundations. A lot of wood frame homes were damaged, which is surprising. And then they got a map here showing the area of damage. They have another map showing where most of the damage was at. This one whole area in downtown Kalinga was demolished by the earthquake. Typical dwellings that fell off their foundation resulting in severe damage. Yeah, it shifted on its foundation, it says here. Mobile homes fell off their jacks or, you know, how they jack them up and they put uh, wood underneath to support them. Yeah, this is the typical damage that they had. And how many brick chimneys are actually reinforced? We got one here. And then they have another image right there that collapsed. It says here that the interior walls, which are lath and plaster on wood framing, kept the building shown in this picture from collapsing. See, this one didn't have the lath and plaster. Here's the image. It says four gasoline storage tanks located in the south end of Kalinga did not leak in spite of sliding about four inches off their foundation. One of four large oil storage tanks at the Getty Kalinga oil facility ruptured at the buried discharge line with subsequent oil spill. Shell Oil Company water treatment plant was one of the most heavily damaged facilities inspected. One tank out of ten sustained what they call an elephant foot buckling failure in the walls. And of course you got the separation, the breaking of different lines, pipes. Here's another tank with what they call the elephant foot bulge at the base of a storage tank. They think because of the upper elephant foot bulge, it was caused by the fluids sloshing inside. It was quite an extensive study, if you want to read through it all. Um, it's by P-U-B-S dot U-S-G-S dot gov uh, forward slash P-P forward slash 1487 slash report dot PDF and I'll give you a link um, in the more information box down below. So here's the location of um, this morning's 3.4 and then we got another 3.4 that I put on here. Now this was um, January 3rd of this year. Just a reminder that another large earthquake can occur at any time and hopefully everyone is prepared. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions um, please put them down below. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your support. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.